Hello, Julian. Hey, Mike, how are you? I'm excellent, thank you, and really, really looking forward to tonight's special, special show. Yeah, me too. Some people say that this person runs the most popular comedy page on Facebook. Some say he says outrageous things about authority in the establishment. Some say he has a soft spot for kittens. And when asked if he is this person, random strangers shout out that they are in fact him. But to us, he simply are our tame veterinary surgeon. And we call him Dr. or Professor Raptured Spleen. Let, let's get Dr. Spleen in. Hi, I'm Mike Brampton. And my name is Julian Ho. Welcome to Veterinary Ramblings. Dr. Spleen? Professor Spleen? Uh, Dr. 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 Yes. Spleen? How, how, how do we refer to you? Um, with deference and respect, generally. Right. Of course, but my lord, sir. That'll do as well. Yep. Okay. Yep. Good. Good. So, so my, my lord, sir, Herr Doctor Professor Spleen. That, that's that's right. We'll, we'll carry on in that vein. Good. That, yeah. That'll do. Spleen will do for short. Spleen. But, um, yeah. Spleen. Right. So what? You're, you're going to name yourself after one of the most famous groups of characters ever produced on Facebook. Now, the Spleen straight... characters. You've gone straight in there and showing off the amount of research you've done, haven't you? Oh, well, yeah, of that. That's beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> do, you, do you see how... Do you see how much fun it is? It just it flows, doesn't it? it it's it's like, a, like a meandering stream, gently flowing from top yeah. to top. What did you um, think of the Spino characters? Did any resonate with you? Absolutely, because for, for those of you that are listening to the show, the Spleno characters on the Raptured Spleen page on Facebook are based on a, a famous Danish children's building bricks company, other, otherwise known as Lego. And, and the Spleno figures are absolutely superb because what they do is they take some of the characteristics of, of various people around the veterinary industry and essentially, um, how would you describe it? Professor Spleen, you you exaggerate some of their their features. Um, no, we just work with some really strange people, and and so we just um, we just describe them straight off, really. Which is why it's really important that um, we preserve some degree of an anonymity, hence the COVID mask here, because otherwise we wouldn't be able to just transcribe our material. This is literally biography for people we we've we've, um, we've worked alongside, and sometimes they get tagged in there as well. Because they actually look so much like little Lego characters. In some cases, <laughs> some cases, yeah, we share them, we share them around on the, on the discussion group. And, and it's that, is that it? Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> and most of them are an amalgamation of lots of people as well, with a bit of characteristic thrown on. So who, who is your favourite Spleno character then, Professor Spleen? Oh, my favourite. I mean, there's a lot of them. That, when we put up the dexamethasone, got, um, the government was making a big fuss about this new wonder drug mm -hmm. uh, COVID, where it was, it was dexamethasone. And we had the picture of Boomerbeck with the, the thing saying, everyone calm down, jab a dex, back to work um, in front. <laughs> that, that, that's the one that putting it up. I would just laugh every time for about a week. But my actual, my, my favourite one is Practice Wonder Mum. Oh, yeah. Ah, she, she's the one who, despite having had naught hours sleep every night because of a crying baby, still comes in with a cake for all the staff the next day. So I think most practices have got a practice wonder mum lurking around we've somewhere. Unmasked we've unmasked him. We've unmasked the raptured spleen. Oh, How fantastic! Oh, this is amazing. Practice wonder mum. Yeah, on the spleen, we we try and do. Sometimes we're quite barbed, and sometimes we're quite. You know, sharp and to the point, and some people all sort of read stuff and, oh, that's a bit sharp. But hopefully, we're we're towards keep searching where that line is. You only find where the line actually is when your toes get a bit damp the other side, don't you? Absolutely, yeah. you've got to cross it. Yeah. Um, so occasionally, there's a damp toe, and we have to, to pull back a little bit. And we, we try and check things out around some some other people as well. We've all got 
and you know some people that we can quietly ask you know, what do you think about is that funny or you, know, you could fall in love with something but um you've got to check if it's funny and sometimes if it's a bit sharp then just a rewrite or some various people have helped with a, with a little bit of a rewrite and and you can you can take away the sharpness and still keep the humor in things yeah mm -hmm. But often we, we, we try and drop in something that's a little bit of an uplift and a little bit positive to it. And the feedback we got on practice Wonder Mum, it was sort of shining a bit of a light on that classic mum guilt. We should probably should sort of say parent guilt, um, but of wanting to be all things in all parts and feeling that you're not quite good enough all the time. And but actually delivering a fantastic amount for your family and for your work colleagues and and that idea that actually all your work colleagues see what you're up to and and really admire that and so we had a closing line that all oh, practice wonder mums children think that they've got the best mum in the world and none of them are wrong um and that one went out and it just flew you know there's people that you know are in there for all of us there's people that we know and, you know there's messages and there's a bit of tears and stuff and tears of joy and and stuff like that on there so so that that one scores highly with with me on sort of what what we're about really that's that's really nice i think that's, that's good so it, for you it's it's bringing what some a lighter look some humor into the daily grind that we all go through yeah largely we try and well we time things. We're, we're all uk based the writer we've got the slots that we'll time time for and that is, I'm sorry for the vernacular, but it's morning poo um, around about <laughs> just after seven o'clock. Um, it's lunch break, or um, obviously if we've got something that's focused for the nurses, then there'll be nurse break. And then depending on the type of job, we normally do a couple per day. Mm -hmm. um, but if there's something that's really going to be a mass impact, then around about eight, half eight, we'll put that out. We've got about 4,000 fans in America, 3,000 in Australia, so it fits in with different time schedules, but we'll often get messages into the group, which we all read, and it's sort of, you know, stuff like I had a really difficult day, I had a crappy time, and and that was a big lift. And right. you know, you're saying stuff we're all thinking, and that's coming from the fact that we're all out there and working in various different aspects of the profession. And so, if you can articulate something that everyone's feeling, and find the humour in it then you can take something that people feel is a bit of a, a burden on the shoulders and actually turn it into something that we'll all have a chuckle about or recognise. That's nice. It is. And actually, it's a very British thing, though, in some ways, isn't it? Laughing about something that uh, that's troubled us or that worries us. Yeah. And I, I, I don't want to sort of stereotype the British too much, but we, we, we're well known for having a good old laugh at uh, at the establishment is satire, true satire. The, 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 the modern movement started in this country by, by Peter Cook and, and, uh, and his cronies, who brought in the so called American satirists, who were really just rude vocal mouthpieces trying to shock people. But there was no, there was no cleverness. There was no, let's dissect what we find troublesome and what we find wrong yeah. and try and exaggerate those bits and find humor in it. Obviously, in, in, any humour has has a butt to it, and a, that's B U double T, hasn't it? But actually, your your humour and good satire doesn't hurt the individual. It's not pointed to try and uh, reduce anyone's self esteem, mm. but it's there to, to perhaps take people down a peg or two who need to be taken down a peg or two, and simplify complex matters that are otherwise nonsensical. That's that good enough description of it do you think yeah I, I, I think so one of the principles of the spleen is that we'll all take a turn in the hot seat they talk about satire or, or some sorts of humor it's always got to punch upwards yes but if you set that as your rules then you're instantly setting up a hierarchy that doesn't have to be there so some people are easy targets you know the, the royal college is an easy target or those in power are an we, easy target. We, we, we wouldn't say anything about the Royal College, would we, Julian? Never do. Never do. No. Never. 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 Well, we say something about some of the uh, stupid and inane rules they bring out sometimes, and lack of forethought that's gone in. 
but actually they're all hard-working people there and sometimes they get on the wrong path don't they yeah and it takes a little bit of a prompt from uh, from the the general drudging vet to, to perhaps bring that to light and, and we follow their directions with regard to cpd as well don't we, we do completely completely and we'll we'll um, stick to that well tonight as well interestingly enough professor spleen i introduced you um, as as a world famous Facebook internet page author editor, and I said that when asked if you are the raptured spleen, random people shout out down the street, Spartacus style, that they are in fact the raptured spleen. As in, are you the raptured spleen? I am the raptured spleen. No, I am the raptured spleen. We are in fact legion. You are oh. legion. Now you've mentioned this because you've you you keep saying we. Yeah. Can you share some more on, more on that? Because I think a number of people perceive the raptured spleen as being one person. Uh, we have a, a writing group, mm -hmm. and so in some cases, someone will just come up with something. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes someone will have an idea, and sometimes someone will, will present the first little glimmer. And actually, the, the, the joke comes 90% from someone else then of taking that and running with it. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we, we have a writing group where there are some people who are quite prolific and some people who are less prolific, but will occasionally come up with an absolute perler. Right. And some people um, who more sort of contribute a bit of background or a bit of a, advice on it. And then we, we tag some things as being from the splenic massive, which is material that's been sent in to us. Right. Um, and sometimes we'll edit it a little bit, and sometimes we'll just put it straight up and say, thank you very much. But we put a hashtag on that from the splenic masses, and then sometimes people who submitted it will claim it as well. Um, mm -hmm. And then if you've got any, I think I touched on earlier, if you've got something where I'm thinking, is this funny? Or... Is this too sharp or does it need a, a, a rewrite on it? Then there are, uh, are other groups of people that I can take something to. And I, I don't want to sort of, I don't want to give the idea that all of this is meticulously crafted because quite often someone, <laughs> much, <laughs> as, much as it may appear, that, that the time and effort and the, the sculpting that goes into every last syllable is absolutely pristine. I have to disabuse you of that and say that sometimes it's just slapped up quickly in a quick coffee break. As in, um, what, what are we going to put up in an hour's time? Oh, my God. Yeah, a little bit. Sometimes we do some scheduling, but I, I like to always be available. Well, more if there's anything where there could be a bit of controversy or something on, or, or people might take it the wrong way, then I like to be around about when it goes up. Just, just to be able to steer off people in, in, in the right direction if they, if they get the wrong end of the stick. Yeah, a little bit like that. We do have a rule that um, if you want to to discuss something, we, we are profoundly allergic to virtue signalling. Right. So if you want to discuss something, um, <laughs> we do it by a message and we'll have an atta and um, we'll adjust things if necessary. We've found some good material through that sort of thing as well. Have you considered this side hmm. or whatever? It, it's a little bit about finding that line, but it's also about being careful that you don't trample over it. Yeah. Well, yeah. We, we, we've experienced that as well, although I have to say that I've never actually interviewed an organ before. Um, but uh, we, we understand exactly what you're saying there because... I think we, we agreed that you were going to call it, refer to us as a mighty organ. Well, that, that's... people have referred to Mike and myself as not the mighty organs, haven't they? Well, I, I, I don't know. I think it's yeah. it, it's quite a formidable organ, the one that we were referred to, <laughs> referred to <laughs> as. <laughs> but, but Professor Spleen, I mean, I, I love I love the fact you know just staying on the on the organ thing and and as as raptured spleen, which of course in itself is a, is a play on on words and, and very cleverly done. We love that. You refer to some of your followers as the splenic masses. These. Yeah seemingly protuberous lumps that circulate around on the the main organ itself yeah that was an absolute fluke <laughs> <laughs> no i thought it'd been carefully worked out in in, in your in, in your whole ideology when you thought what should we do we'll become the, the, the 
have ruptured spleen because then we can have splenic masses. I mean, surely. No, we are, we are nothing if not honest. A lot of thought went into ruptured spleen. And so rapture and rupture and vent your spleen and the smiley icon and drawing that out and then getting, getting a, a designer to, to do it nicely. So a lot went into that. Right. And then we launched and, and I think it was like a day or so after it was like, ooh, there it masses. <laughs> and, and, and there it was. Yeah, uh, yeah that, that, that counts as a freebie, I think. That's great. That's so great. where did it all start? What, where did Raptured Spleen come from? And, and tell us a bit about your meteoric rise to, uh, to Facebook and internet stardom, because it's quite an impressive story. It was someone else's idea in the first place. So I did some writing on, on another group on a veterinary basis. And then as that sort of came to a bit of a natural end and a bit of a precipitous end, I started up the Raptured Spleen. And we sort of had a thought of a chat with some other people who were quite funny, funny in a ha-ha sense. But actually, um, if you looked at them funny in the other sense as, as well, <laughs> it says he with a, with a monkey <laughs> There was a horrible moment when I thought this wasn't going to get delivered. It actually got delivered um, about three, four hours ago. And so we haven't had quite had time to puff it up from its folded in. So it looks like I've taken one to the side of the side of the face. Is, is that yeah. not your real face? <laughs> I, I must confess. No, I've had a little bit of teeth work done. Right. And, um, and you know, no one can get to the hairdressers these days, can they? No. So, um, I, I've, I've got that problem. Yeah. Julian and I have been suffering with that problem all yeah. through lockdown. Can't Terrible. get a bloody Terrible. hairdresser. Yeah. You want to get to get yourself to a dog groomer's. What do you got there? What, what are you drinking? What's that? Wait, hey, hey. What do you got? Sure. Go. That is um, water. Actually, it is water. Is it? <laughs> yes, so is mine. Yeah. So, very so. Oh, I, I've got some... internet cut out there, but presumably oh. you're letting that. Well, I, I'm, I'm quite pleased about that because... Um, We've we've got a message. We got a message on our, our fan board saying that people were concerned about the amount of gin that we were drinking on uh, on the shows, and so I've, I've taken that to heart and and I've decided that um, they're absolutely right. So so I, I've switched to rum tonight. Good, um, good, good rum. rum. Well, yeah. and I've I've switched to to red wine. Although that's that's almost out. So I've got a bottle of gin. I'll just top this up in a minute. Yeah. No, oh, that, that's that's appropriate. So, so just to keep them happy, the tonic in my eye. It's it's gunpowder room. No, it's gun room navy rum. And th there's a story a story about that, of course, and I'm, I'm sure everybody here is, is well familiar with um, with the British Navy and the story of uh, navy strength rum. But just in case somebody isn't aware of that. Um, I, just, I understand it still happens today. The tradition in the British Navy since the 1600s has been to give every sailor a tot of rum. It's part of their salary. It's part of their salary. Was it not to, to help them with scurvy or boring windless days on the high seas? Uh, I, I think it went a couple of decades ago. Did it? Decades. I think so, yeah. Um, but um, the, the diluted grog was... Isn't that the source of the mojito? A mojito yes. is a form of, yeah. because of the lime that went into it, and I don't, well, I don't drink mojitos, but, but their diluted grog, the rum made the water taste, their, their brackish water taste more palatable, yeah. and obviously brought a bit of fun with it besides. That's right. And the, and the lime in it helped uh, prevent scurvy, because the vitamin C. Yeah. But of course, the big issue in those days was that the ordinary sailors would live and sleep around their cannon below deck. And so it, it became a, a Navy strength rum because it was certified that if they spilt their rum, the gunpowder would still be able to fire. Mm. And that, that comes okay. in at around about, mm. I think it says here, 65% proof. Oh, gosh, that'd be all right, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. And, and if you don't like rum, of course, you can get Navy Strength gins now as well. I suppose the officers drank that. You can probably get Navy Strength water. Well, it's vodka. Is it, is, uh, is it is it sixty five percent alcohol that is a hundred percent proof? Because a hundred percent proof is what will still like gunpowder. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Yeah, 
That's it. Oh. But I'm no good at maths. <laughs> but do have quite a skill for drinking gin, uh, rum, uh, oh, whiskey. There we go. Ah, oh, so serious stuff. Can, I'd, I'd just like to yeah. ask because um, you, you've given me quite a clue here. Um, and I've got a feeling that you probably missed the Spleno Vet Centre Zoom get together call that was convened by the. Um, and who was it that convened that particular meeting? That was the regional director's idea. <laughs> and I've got a feeling yeah. that you probably missed that meeting because, um, well, how is Sally? The, the regional director caricature, um, we put on, we put on that, that the, actually some, some of the ideas of that got sent in to us. Um, and so you know, we put a little bit of a, a twist and sort of brought some other things together as well, including that sense that, you know, there's, I can't remember if it was, if it was on the Zoom call one or if it was on the, the individual one, but that idea that you collate everyone together for one lovely positive reason and then all of a sudden you turn over this flip chart that's heading south or <laughs> you drop in a, 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 by the way and I just wanted to get all to, uh, everyone together and we'll just touch base about something and then and then by the way if you don't start parking in that space then someone is going to suffer and you know that sort of will we, lure everyone in with with one cent and then, um, and then once you drop your guard, boom, there it comes. It, it's the classic shit sandwich gone wrong, isn't it? The feedback sandwich. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it must be a, a terribly, I know some people who work in that sort of area. And, you know, it's, it's to, to suddenly plop up in a practice. And you'd sort of, I mean, it's almost like a, if a Royal College inspector comes to a, a practice for the practice standard. Which can only be a good thing, he hastens to add. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. it, there's an element of that relationship. I mean, whoever has a cosy chat with their driving test um, examiner, and it's, it's sort of you try and break something down, but actually, whoo, you're here for a, a reason. It's difficult to form that relationship in moving into a, a, a practice and sort of touring around all the different <laughs> ones. There's different as difficult aspects to all jobs, isn't there? It's our there job is. just laugh at them as much as possible get it out in the open get it chuckled about so so you, you're saying getting out in the open and, and everybody will chuckle about it i presume that uh <laughs> boomer vet didn't mind uh, everybody's reaction to him inviting multi-poo breeder to this zoom meeting then <laughs> you have done your research assiduously and i applaud you for it it's utterly out of character but absolutely <laughs> um, no, normally when I do when, normally when I do my research, I turn up somebody completely wrong. Um, <laughs> and I get into all sorts of. We, we've actually dropped the, we've dropped the Google search from the show now because it got it got uh, potentially libelous at times, didn't it, Julian? I was going to say that the, the person we're hoping to have on at some stage in the future, uh, we we Googled uh, incorrectly <laughs> and thought we can't possibly have this person on. They do that to horses? No, we've misspelled the name. Right. Well, I mean, just for clarity, I do do that to horses, and, and I'm quite prepared to talk about it. No, um, no you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> really not. No, no. no, no you don't. Uh, otherwise, I, you will be being introduced to our other guests. I'm guest. putting, putting this list, It's all right. It's all right. Well, I, I think I'm, I'm going to call one of our other guests from the other week. Um, what, what's his title? The Regulator? Having <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a discussion about your future career. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. That is a great caricature, though, isn't it? Because the, the boomer will, um, will communicate. They, they, will, they will be able to, to charm and to defang that dragon that is the multi-poo breeder and yep. there's, there's a totally different and in a way that's sort of a positive thing but there, there are also the time when you wander through and and hang about that there's someone stood in the prep room there as a caesar's going on and oh christ it's so and so and all the rules have gone out of the window yeah. and um and everything gets gets flouted doesn't it so yeah that but we we also feature 
know, was it? I think it was Mrs. Parker, um, who is the the architect, the, the angel client, the older lady. She's she comes in, she's she's knitted some um some nightcaps and baby clothes because she knows the deputy head nurse is expecting. No, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry, Dr. Spleen. You're not gonna get away with that because I know that Sally Parker is in the stable yard. And that Sally Parker is is actually um one of your horse horse clients. Right. <laughs> So, He's working on a script, isn't he? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Sally Parker is an equine client. Yeah, yeah, because that's uh, why that is why you missed that's why you missed that Zoom call. Because you happen to have got stuck in Sally Parker's stable yard for some mysterious reason. Well, I, I think we've all been stuck in Sally Parker's stable yard at some point in our careers, haven't we? I, I remember long before I was married. Uh, <laughs> an awful, awful half hour, maybe 40 minutes in, in Sunny Parker's stable yard. Awful. Okay. Wonderful, but awful. Hosting, but fine, yeah. Mm. It's probably only 10 minutes, actually. It seemed like half an hour. <laughs> that kind of always did drag a little. Yeah, although now I'm I'm doing it for my career. So, um, and, and I get to ride Parisians frequently. Brilliant. So, uh, yeah. Holding a, a pygmy marmoset in each hand and shouting yippee kaye. Well, the pygmy marmosets, they're a lot of fun, but it's not really a living, is it? <laughs> it's not. And in fact, you, you mentioned not a living. When, when they're dead, I think you can hollow them out and put beans in them and use them as maracas, can't you? Um, yes, yes. Now the, now everyone's got their own slippers, then yes, we need to repurpose <laughs> um, the pygmy marmosets in, in some sort of way like that. Absolutely. Good. Good. But tell us about this this client who, who comes in and uh, has knitted things for uh, for, yeah. for babies. Well, every so every so often on the spleen, you 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 detect that there's a little bit of a drift because because one joke can spawn another, or and things can take on their own sort of direction. So a couple of occasions we've had people who've given us a little bit of feedback when new grads are coming out it's very easy um to talk about um you know um the challenge of starting out into practice and it's gonna be a hellish rotor and stuff like that and there's a lot of funny material you can do on there but if you drift too far along there you can start to almost set the agenda and and accentuate fear so someone sent us a message on that and so we purposefully brought up a couple that brought it from another direction of people making a really satisfying start into practice and wondering where the sense of disillusionment was, was going to come or being worried that they hadn't achieved a sense of disillusionment yet so that's there on their pdp um <laughs> and the same applied with the client it's quite early on actually isn't it the um achieving a sense of disillusionment i think it's supposed to be three to four weeks after qualifying isn't it absolutely yeah and and the thing is not achieving it the thing is maintaining it for all career there's mm. one thing get there but then you, you've got to yeah you've got to keep it going all the way through imposter syndrome and beyond yeah yeah um, that, that feeling of i could have been keeping that level of uh, I, I could have been i could have been a player i could have done that yeah i i i, I I've, oh, I've had aspirations i've wanted to be the leader of the pack i can beat my chest like the rest of them but there's this um silverback gorilla and he just won't let me have a have look in he won't, he, <laughs> That's a sad, sad, sad story. I feel your pain. I, I do pain. too. I, I think it's good. You're, you're, you're quite supportive of, uh, of new grads and students, aren't you? I, and, but I understand that you sometimes overestimate the number of cabbage leaves required um, <laughs> to... to um, it, but I've got gin coming out of my nose now. <laughs> <laughs> Give me, give me a bit of a run up on that sort of thing. <laughs> so, you, you want me to guide you directly, gently into the story then? <laughs> There's a few things I need to set straight on there. <laughs> not, not only it the cabbage leaves. Cauliflower and two cabbage leaves for a start. Yeah, yeah but I, I understand that one, one, one cauliflower floret was probably enough. But this has probably um, got something to do with your problem with the silverback as well. 
as a family, we've gone off cauliflower cheese right off. <laughs> You know, the really awful thing is, I had that tonight. I feel ill now. <laughs> I, I, I did. I got it. Back to you. I, think, I think we need we need to explain. I think well, it, it is the habit in in UK universities, um, particularly final years. Gone are the days of the, the rag mag, um, which used to be a, a put together magazine of of jokes and witticisms and sarcasms and pointed comments towards the uh, the lecturers. And we're in today's today's day. The thing for the university students to do is to do a nude calendar. And mm. uh, th 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 I mean, I have to say, you've got to take your hat off to these guys. They they've known well, that's all they leave on, isn't it? Well, it's what they leave on. Yeah. And, and they, they sell these calendars for charity and uh, raise a lot of money and do a lot of good work with them. And it, it must take a lot of courage to, to parade around in front of your peers wearing no clothes and your, your bits covered up by delicately placed tails or hay bales or whatever. And uh, who, uh, some, some students got into a bit of stick for, for doing a calendar or something, didn't they, Dr. Spleen? And you, you, you took their side? Yeah, we, we will always take vet students' side. Um, I mean, we'll, we'll, like a little bit of an older brother, we might give him a, a, um, a little bit of a, a joke and a poke. Um, but um, we, yeah, we'll always stick up for, for, for um, the younger members of our profession. And so, and so we bloody well should. And yeah, they got, we don't really want to sort of rip back open old wounds. And I, I think they've got to a, a much better place, or those people involved have got to a much better place. But there was a time period where there was a bit of a furore on social media um, about these students. And so we got a little bit involved and chatted with some of the individuals involved. And uh, I'm sorry, I should have um, you know, thought of this beforehand, but the student president and her team at the Royal College um, was an absolute lioness in defense of her colleagues. And so we, we, we did a few, you know, jokes about a, someone holding a shield, a lady warrior holding a shield over a fallen conference. But we wanted to draw attention to this sort of stuff and also really draw attention to what a superbly resolute job this, this, stu this student president leading her, her group was doing. Mm. And in, you know, in a situation where sort of the authority figures of the university are saying, well, you know, this is casting a program down upon it and sort of, well, yes, we'll tell them off and we'll give them a wigging. And these guys had done, the girls had done absolutely nothing that every other vet student, vet school hadn't done for about 20 years leading, leading up to it. Um, and so, um, yeah, we, we thought that was, that was pretty special. So we kind of marshaled opinion and we've done this a few times we kind of encouraged people to express their own opinions on it and form a little bit of a mouthpiece to it mm. and um that sounds really virtuous and and somehow that then led on to me standing naked in a hallway with a selfie camera and a cabbage and two cabbage leaves so, sorry, um, yes, two cabbage leaves, yes, two yes. cabbage leaves. Yeah. Yes. Carry on. And they weren't sprouts. That's a lie. Okay? <laughs> oh, okay. They weren't. Right. And it, yeah, the floretum sprouts, I've heard it going around. It's, it's, not, it's not true. Malicious sorry. lies. Malicious. Awful. Um, and so, yeah, and, so, and so, sometimes with... You can flip from that to serious. But if you can put something out, that catches people's eye and I don't think we should look too closely at that particular aspect of things catching in people's but eyes, but um... you have had your eye out. Right. Um, but if you can put something out like that that, that grasps people, the humor, and we'll touch on this later, but humor is such a way of engaging with people. Um, and and you can put something out like that that a tracks then people will express themselves on it with the click of a like or a smile or they'll share or tag someone about it and actually you can attract a great deal of attention and then everything came to a much better place 
And so we wanted to represent that as well, because the authority figures in, in the university were then supporting the students and very clearly. And so we referenced that on that on the um, you know, and basically said, well, you know, no name, name, but we wanted to, to say well done. And then I think we, we read in one, we read in one update or official update that come out, there was, there was a reference to someone being awarded um, a cauliflower or something like that. So this was like, <laughs> we, we had, a, we, we had a, a negligible, or a, our, our role really was drawing attention to what those students were doing for their colleagues. And then alumni were, were also helping in there. So if anything, we sort of shine a light on a little bit, the, the, the good work that, that people were, so, were doing, which needs to happen when you have a Ferrari does, like that, doesn't it? It does. And, and, and we, we mentioned fuses and cannons earlier on. And I guess what, what, um, what humour sometimes does is to allow a path for defusing a situation, doesn't it? It yeah. gives everyone an out. Uh, but there's, yeah. there's a big thing at the moment about... Um, cancel culture isn't there uh, i know there are various comedians that have got together and said and john cleese i think is, is one of the heads of these and so actually you know, humor is not racist it's not sexist it's not ageist it's not anything else. humor is humor and provided it's not meant directly to be uh, offensive and i think i think it's very easy for everyone to realise that that particular humour isn't directed at anyone offensively, provided that's not the case, that then all humour is allowable. And I'm, I'm a great believer in that. But the difficulty these days is that we're all looking to be offended. We're all looking for that little bit of a, of a fuse to say, um, uh, can we can we take offence at that? Should we? Either on behalf of ourselves or, or, or our cousins or friends or, or downtrodden. And um, I know Mike, uh, has, has spoken to me about people like Ricky Gervais before mm. uh, in, in that sense. Mike, do you, do you, want, to, do you want to take it from there? Well, I think, I, think I, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, and, and maybe you, you're familiar with this. I, I don't know, Professor Spleen, but um, Ricky Gervais says that you, you can tell a joke about anything. And if somebody's offended, then that is their problem being offended at what we have just said and it is not necessarily our responsibility to uh, to modify what we wish to say and he, he basically says he can tell it you can tell a joke about anything if somebody's offended then that is their problem it is not his i think that uh, i'm not going to call myself a, a a comedian but you know we we do a lot of comedy stuff i think that's quite a an easy position for the people who are putting that the, the stuff together to take. And actually, I, I differ on that a little. I love what Rowan Atkinson did speaking with, with Parliament and saying um, that, you know, that it shouldn't, or we, we can't aim to never offend anybody, most mm. definitely. Mm. But I think if, if you roll back, the, the times are changing. And if you roll back, you know, some of Jim Davidson's stuff, and even before that, there, there was something about um, your, your neighbour and it ain't half hot mum and things like that. If you roll a long way back, times move on and that's, that's very inappropriate now. Well, you, if you look back at, let's say, if you look back at the in-betweeners, and I think that's, that's about 10, 12 years old. And when that came out, roaringly funny, um, and I'm showing it with the with the kids. But there's there's you know there's stuff in in that using um, homosexuality as a as a slur um, that actually, and you know maybe it's the times are, are changing more and more swiftly, and 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 we've got sort of pedal along to come up. But you you absolutely would not write that now or accept it and and looking back just in that time frame you know it, it it really jars and so i think we will see what we can't do i think is go back and say you were wrong then because you were speaking in those Excuse times me. yeah we should say we're going to evolve on from that and we're not going to use you know that was playground talk then it was certainly playground talk yeah <clears throat> a few more years ago when i was in a, a, a playground and and it was 
an insult that was bandied around, but that must have been pretty rough to, if, if that was personal to you. Yeah. So I, I, I think we do have a responsibility to, to keep going and to keep moving on, but we can't be criticising people for their actions then no. using the rules Ab now. Absolutely, yeah. because there are legal aspects, there are moral aspects, but, but I'm a firm believer that any joke that, that's meant by the teller to be funny and not clearly not to be to, to be offensive offense shouldn't be dragged out of it yeah and okay. and you, you're right that there, there are occasions where where that humor is misjudged um yeah. like, like for example the the man who goes into the blind man who goes into a, a pub and um and he says to the uh the, the, the woman behind the bar he says um Hey, I've got a, I've got a great joke about uh, about a blonde. Do you want to hear it? And she says, um, she says "Look, I, I must tell you, 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 you can't see, so you wouldn't know. But I, I'm blonde. Uh, my two other barmaids are blonde, and, and there are thirty members of the, uh, the blonde all in wrestling, uh, female all in wrestling team here, drinking at the bar. Do, do you really want to go and tell that that joke?" And he says, "No, no, I, I don't want to repeat it thirty three times. You're absolutely right." Um, and, and that's and that's not that joke isn't an offensive joke, but but actually, if you say that joke among a group of purely blonde women, then clearly that could be taken as offensive. And so you've got to you've got to look at your audience there, haven't you? Plus, which you don't want to explain it that many times. <laughs> yeah. I, I think the fact that they were wrestling wrestlers would be uh, would be quite pertinent as well if you're in in the, yeah. in the middle. I mean, yeah, some of these jokes, it takes perspective as well, doesn't it? Who influences you and who who are your heroes? Yeah. Um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's probably just a little bit, whoever's funny. I would always tune into Billy Connolly. I had Billy Connolly tape hmm. um, as, a, as a kid, but not, not that young um, <laughs> kid. I love observational humour, where people... Hmm. Much more than sort of here's a setup of an artifact, you know, the, the rabbi yeah. and the priest are in a whatever. Um, I, I love observational humor and I love satire. So, and, and I love people who are able to just do a delivery of something. There was a guy called, I think he was called Phil Kay, where he said yeah. very little in a stand up, very little at all, but just had the, the crowd sort of. You know, given so it was all in the timing and and the delivery. It was, it was so incredibly snappy, really was. If people can see normal life, but you 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 have your your filter on to actively look for the humorous side of normal life. I was called into the small animal department of a large mixed practice, and there was someone who was struggling to put a lead on one of those little spirally hooks things. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And so you take a quick photo of that with a little coil to it and say three bets, 20 minutes, unsolvable. Um, <laughs> but to just take something that is part of our lives and to look at that, whether you have orange filter specs or green filter specs or funny filter specs, then then you can I suppose you, you can draw a bit of funny out of every day i mean you could even you could even look at me sat here and and draw something humorous out of my appearance for really? example no I, w I wouldn't do that because that that could be construed as deeply offensive dr spleen and i don't think that would be necessarily appropriate <laughs> you know, i mean no no i don't think that'd be appropriate at all but, I mean, it's, but but would it be inappropriate? Because there's a difference between being appropriate and being inappropriate. And, and I, I mentioned Peter Cook and Dudley Moore earlier. That they they are my comic heroes. Certainly, yeah. Peter Cook, definitely. I mean, he, he could come up with um, with a with a comic script that lasts five minutes long. It would take him five minutes to write it. Uh, I've, I've written comic scripts, and it's taken me an hour or two or three. Uh, or, and they're or still not day. funny. They're like your and they're still not funny. No, no, but but that's the point. But he could think of something funny and write it down, and the the tap would never stop. Hmm. Uh, and it's joyful. It's absolutely joyful if you come up with something and send it out. 
you know, to sit there, I don't want to overinflate these things, but you know, when you do an operation on a dog and then you see it after, you see the mm. impact that goes home with the owner, to actually be able to visualize the impact of what you've done, you do a caricature and you see five minutes later that there are 30 people who tagged someone on there, it means, and I'm going to, you know, they, they, they tag a name because they remind you, or you'll enjoy this, and it, it's flying along. Being able to see the impact of that is really, really deeply satisfying. I mean, you know, we all, um, all of the writers absolutely adore that. That's the round of applause sort of wave coming back and goes when you're on stage. Of course. That, and it, it, it's, it's really exhilarating. To see sort of so you, you get tagged in your own joke? It Something may have says, happened. Somebody says, hey, you might really like this and, and um, find out it's your own joke. That must be awesome. Yeah, and more often, it, I mean, it, it's very easy to write self-deprecating humour. So if you're writing about what a, what a, um, what a, a twat, some farm vet who's doing equine work on the Isle of Man off the coast of Brittany in the laboratory, if you're doing that sort of caricature and then someone sends back and you, oi, um, <clears throat> Splino, have a look at, have a look at this. That sounds just like you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but if you wrote that about yourself as, as uh, Hair Professor Dr. Spleen, that would come across as sounding cruel, wouldn't it, to, to that vet who is working in the Isle of Man in the, in the laboratory. There's a, there, there's a fine line, isn't there? So Self-deprecating is, is very different from uh, deprecating... Oh, the tortoise has gone to sleep. Yeah, you know. Uh, that, very, very different from deprecating other people or, or putting someone down. And that's that's a very fine, very fine line. Um, yeah, but if, if you're... Uh, our principle is, it's not just going to be shop floor laughing at power and hmm. it's not going to be student laugh at professor we're not going to have or sort of validate that concept of hierarchy. But we're very keen that we're, we're not just going to have jokes that point in one direction and validate that idea. We will have everything going round in a circle. So mm. you take a turn in the hot seat and you take a turn laughing and it's it's a cyclical concept. Um, good, good. Because otherwise it just becomes a bashing and it, it loses the humour, doesn't it? So. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I must say, I, as, as Mike said earlier, I, I don't do a lot on uh, social media, but Mike directed me to, to your stuff, and it, it is hilarious and incredibly witty, and it's difficult to be both sometimes. You can be clever or you can be funny, but to be both, I, I think you, you, you've really hit the nail on the head in, in uh, much of what you've done there, which is yeah, great. Very fine. Thank you. Appreciate it. I don't, I don't give out compliments often. No, absolutely. <laughs> no, we don't, actually. No. We normally take the mickey out of our guests, Julian. What's going on? Yeah, we do. We haven't done that tonight. No, I don't want to take a mickey out of a six-foot gorilla, do you? No, I'm not either. So. <laughs> <laughs> I am kneeling down, actually. I am kneeling down. Um, I, mean, I believe you. Yeah, you to, to a degree, though, in, in this interaction, you're robbed of that because all you have to interact with is, is this sort of very flat or stoic mask. So you're robbed a lot of the expression or the things that you... you you know, you can you can interact like that. On. So I'm going to wear this all the time now. I think. So let me let me ask the question again then. So so, who are some of your comedy idols? Comedy idols. Um. Well, there is this. There's a, there's a couple of guys. Um, I think he's who, got it. I think he's got it. Um. There's a couple of guys who um, spring to mind and, you know, they, yeah, I'll, I'll be perfectly frank, they're not the, they're not the best looking people in the world. Um, and, it's not us. Yeah, they, he hasn't got what, it. I really, what I really admire is they don't let that hold them back. They don't let that confine them. And, and, and they've actually, they, they've taken the step of, I mean, of all mediums, video. <laughs> I'd never call um, Mike a medium, would you? <laughs> <laughs> no, 
Oh, I'm an extra I mean, large, mate. I mean, since COVID, I've been eating <laughs> and sitting down doing Zoom calls all the time. I've gone on from medium to extra large in the case space of 18 months. You come out of lockdown a hunk of drunk or a chunk, and, and let's face it, I think we know. Don't we? <laughs> he's obviously not talking about us, Julian. No, he's not. A for a moment. Drunk. Yeah, he's obviously not done his. He's obviously not done drunk or a chunk. He's obviously not done his research either, because most of our stuff is audio. So, <laughs> <laughs> We've got a face for radio. Yeah, we have. We have. <laughs> We, we we touched earlier on we touched earlier on about the the RCVS um, our, our erstwhile governing body, and and we touched on CPD, and I'd like to take that round in the circle if I'm if I may, Professor Spleen, because you know, I, I'm, we've got a section on the show that we call sixty second CPD, and it strikes me that there is nobody better placed to deliver. 60 second CPD on bringing humor. We've been a little bit philosophical at times this evening and we've had a great time, but bringing humor to the workplace, colleagues, clients. And I, I was wondering, Professor Spleen, could I challenge you to the 60 second CPD challenge? I'm aboard. I'm there. I'm aboard. <laughs> great. Me, Fantastic. You're going to board with the 60 seconds counting down. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to set that up now and let's hope that I get it the right way round because I have been known to get this completely wrong. So there, there's our countdown. OK, so I'd like to challenge Professor Raptured Spleen, um, 60 second CPD on bringing humour to the workplace. OK, bringing humour to the workplace. Humour, oft derided often looked down on as a minor art, it's childish or it's facile or it's something that's easy or it's unprofessional even. But humour, it goes straight to creating happiness in people. We do so many things that to generate an element of happiness or enjoyment, we have pleasant walks and hobbies, um, we look at scenes or something that make us a little bit happy, but how does that compare with a full-on belly laugh? So bring humour into your workplace. It bonds teams together. Look for the funny in every day. Lifts spirits, raises morale, raises the base level from angst to a geniality. Use it in your consults. It makes a connection with people in the same way that smell or a sound or a song or something like that. If you want to communicate a message down in, laughter is a fast track to impact and people will take that message away with them you can present in an attractive light or funny manner. I'm out. That was perfect. Absolutely, absolutely fabulous. Thank you absolutely. very much indeed, Professor Splane. Brilliant. Brilliant. One of the best. I can't I can't oh. this thing up ever. Oh. It's the one time I've made notes for something like that. The only thing I didn't say was time laughing together is never time wasted. And in fact, is any ever time is ever any time better spent than laughing and enjoying each other's company. Do you know, I, I quite agree. I, I, love it. I remember I was about uh, nine or ten years old, and, and I was always the, the, the kid who, who made jokes at, at school. You can probably imagine, not, not, not any of them funny, but I, I used to try anyway. And my teacher said to me, Julian, you, you'll never get through life making jokes. And I thought, that's very sad. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove her wrong. And um, I think I have. I think I have proved her wrong. I've tried every single day, even when I've had depression, I'll, I'll be honest, you know, I've, I've had very low moments in my life, but actually I've never lost that ability to see something funny in a, in a situation and, and pass it on to other people in the hope and expectation it'll brighten their, their mood or even their day. And I think that's a very important thing, although sometimes jokes can go down very badly in a consult. I remember, and I might have told you this before, Mike, but I was I was in a consult once, once this, this lady brought her cat in and she said, he got a dreadful sore on his back. And, uh, and I, I looked very carefully and I said, sorry, I, I, I can't find it. And she said, no, no, lower. So I said, I can't find it. And, <laughs> and cracked up. And she just stood there blinking for a while. I thought, it hasn't gone down at all well. <laughs> Yeah. So, so Julian, have you, you, you've just you've set yourself up now, haven't you? I mean, you said that you know since school days you've been telling jokes, and we have a traditional part on the show where you tell a joke. 
I do. And, and um, do you have a joke for tonight? I, I've got a joke, and I, I, I'm going to apologise uh, to to our Professor Doctor Spleen because the tradition is that my jokes particularly are usually aren't funny, and um, I, I love them. I love any joke, even if it's bad. Uh, and this is this is a joke actually that came about from uh, uh, from a friend of mine who is an Aikido champion. Uh, so, uh, Herr Professor Tony, if you're listening, Tony, here's here's one for you. Uh, and it's about a, a, a Chinese short sword competition, uh, or Japanese rather, short sword competition, where they um, display their their talents at, um, at using those very sharp, uh, short samurai swords uh, to show their precision at speed. And the uh, the guy who came in third place, talks to the judges, and said, oh, I, was, I was very pleased with, uh, with my score. Uh, I only got third place, but I was very pleased. And he said, well, what did you do to get third place? He said, there was a, there was a fly on the wall. I blew like that just to dislodge it. And then got the sword, and there was just, and the two halves of the fly fell down, bisected perfectly in the middle, fell down on the floor. It's a wow, that's amazing. Let's, let's have a chat to the guy who came in, uh, or, or the person, it could have been a woman, came in uh, n- number two. So she she comes along, there was a woman, and uh, said, Well, I, I did a, a similar thing. I, there was a fly there, and I, I, I'd seen the person before me cut it in half. I thought I could do a little. Better than that. So she she blew against the wall and a fly shot off. She went, and this fly was cut in four perfect pieces, all of which drifted slowly to the floor. And uh, well, that's amazing. That's absolutely incredible. So how did how did someone beat that? Who who uh, who won? And so they said, well, let, let's look at the footage now. And there's the winner. And again, there's another fly, and he gets his sword, does a few deep breathing exercises, and the fly lifts off of the wall, he goes, and there's this, the fly carries on. And they said, uh, I don't quite see how you've won, the fly's still alive. And he said, yes, but he'll never have children. Very good, Julia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Very good. I don't know. I've got a joke. Go on then. What What do you feed a six hundred pound gorilla? Don't know. Anything it asks for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, Doctor <laughs> Professor Spleen. Well, yeah, or Uncle, as I would call him. Yeah. Uncle. Yes. Okay. <laughs> What would you feed your uncle? Anything he asks for. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so st- staying, on the, st- staying on the CPD route then. We're, we're not eligible for race points at the moment, but uh, certainly CPD points through the RCVS. Thank you very much to some of our previous guests. Um, they actually cashed the check, so I think we're probably okay to say this. Oh, fantastic, good, excellent. So um, if, if you'd like to... CPD. Sorry? This counts as CPD, yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, yeah, yeah, it does. It, uh, it oh, ah, no, hold on, hold on. It doesn't count as CPD at the moment, does no, it? We've got two things to do yet to, to enable us to be claimed as CPD. And, hmm. and the first oh. one is we have to download the certificate. Yeah. yeah. Um, have you got a certificate there, Julian? I've got a certificate. Hold on. Just, Here we go. Just, so okay. here's here's the certificate. Right. And uh, and this says certificate of splenic venting. And this yeah. certifies that satire is alive and living with a close friend called Doris in Peckham. Up the cool. establishment. Good. Uh, I'm, I'm loving that. We'll put that up on the page. Here we, there we go. And okay. so, so we've got, we got me dressed as a clown, because why not? We, we've, got, we've got a raptured spleen. I'm just going to bring this closer to the, the camera. There's a, there's a raptured spleen. And... And we've got now look, all, all the CPD certificates have a bit of a bit of a tail to it. So here is raptured spleen, hair professor doctor, looking with a hawkish eye into into the world of humour. I, I thought I thought that I thought that was a seagull doing a poo. 
but we're well, all, it could be it could be that as well. Ourselves from that. And is there going to be a cauliflower on this certificate? There's no cauliflower, actually. I should have put one on there. But, but what we've got here is, is lemurs. This is the hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. And this is basically a shut up and put up, isn't it? Because yeah. what, we, what we don't want is to, is to not make some sort of humour out of it. And so if we don't look and we don't listen and we don't speak, then nothing's being gained. But the worst thing of all is to be too bloody lazy to think of something funny to say in a day. So, sloth indolence, the worst thing of the lot. And that's, that's my offering for this week, CBD certificate. Excellent. So, so the, the other... We can download those and put those in our, in our um, learning journey or whatever we have. And yep. reflect upon it. And, ah. Well, you've got money, you've just... You, yeah. We are, we are... Well, of course, Professor, you, and you're right ahead of the game with that because... We do, of course, have to reflect on that. Hmm. So I'm, I'm wondering if you'd be kind enough just to join Julian and I in a moment's reflection on CPD and the insight into comedy, humour and successful Facebook pages that we've received this evening. Compliments of your good self. Indeed. And, and the need for that humour to lighten dark situations. Indeed. Join us, please, in our moment's reflection. Did you say, hmm? I always do when I'm reflecting. Oh, good, good. I just, I just wondered. I just wondered. I didn't know whether there was any sort of pain. I, I, thought, I thought you'd turned into Millennium Vet then and you were you were back doing your yoga. <laughs> <laughs> whilst, whilst, in, whilst in lockdown on furlough. I'm just <laughs> You weren't expecting... I mean, obviously, the whole content of, of this interview would have abused, which would have informed you of this, but you weren't expecting any wise words from me at that stage, were you? Not, not expecting, no. no. Not expecting, no. no. So on, on that note, on that note... <laughs> on that bombshell. On that hey. utter, utter bombshell, I would like to say thank you very, very much, Herr Doctor Professor Spleen, um, for joining Capitano, us this evening. Capitano Splenio. If you've liked what you've seen or liked what you've heard, don't forget to click like, share it with your friends, spread the news. And if you've got any ideas or you have any guests that you'd like us to uh, to talk with and meet with, then let us know. Get in touch and let's have some fun. But remember, Facebook is the only one we're actually naked on. <laughs> avoid that one. Very true. And, <laughs> and Thanks for having me on. Absolute good. pleasure. Enjoy you're, very, you're very, very yes, welcome. Sir. And I'm Thank thrilled we much. finally managed to unmask the raptured spleen. Indeed. Raptured spleen and the others. May your dogs go with you. May your dog yeah. go with you. Here's one of all.